How do you move out of that? <laughs> Y'all can be seated. So, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Taylor Madhu. Um, I'm actually also known as Real Talk Taylor. <laughs> kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh my gosh, y'all, I met Real Talk Kim for the first time, and that's my girl. That's my cousin that I ain't ever met yet. Hey, Real Talk. Okay. <laughs> no, so I'm having so much fun. It's such an awesome opportunity to be able to just share with y'all my heart, my story of redemption and what the Lord has done in my life. I don't take it for granted. Um, many years ago, I promised the Lord, my junk, my dirt, I promise this won't go in vain, Lord. I will tell the world, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or whether it's on a stage, whatever that looks like, I'm going to tell the world of your goodness. And so today's just another opportunity that I've gotten, and I'm super honored and humbled. Um, and just believing that God is going to do what only he can do. It's not about me. It's not about any of us um, in here trying to make a name for ourselves or whatever. It's literally Jesus being glorified. And so I'm believing that your life will be impacted in some way today. So, like I said, I'm Taylor Madhu. Um, just to tell you a little bit about myself, I'm, I'm married. Um, t my husband is an evangelist that travels the world, and so we get to travel the world and tell people about Jesus. We just gave, um, I just had my baby girl, Evie girl, and she's in the house today, and she's like my full story of uh, redemption, my full circle piece, so she's my little trophy baby. Um, yeah, so um, my life wasn't always picture perfect. Right now it's amazing. It's literally incredible, and I couldn't, I don't have anything negative to say about my life right now. Um, however, it didn't always look that way. Um, there were moments in my life that, um, as I look back over, about three pivotal moments where I could see the enemy really targeted me to destroy me and wipe me out. However, the goodness of God, um, the strength and the power of God invaded every situation and turned it out for his good. Um, However, I did face a lot of pain and, and trauma and um, just, just hard, hard times. Being um, a PK, as I was, it didn't disqualify me from walking through hard times. Let's just get that clear, right? So anyways, born and raised in El Dorado, Arkansas. My father actually does what my husband does now. He was an evangelist full time. I traveled the world. My mother was like superwoman, holding down the house, taking care of three kids. Um, life was literally perfect in my eyes. Um, at age seven, me and my brother were running around um, playing Batman and Robin. We had towels tied to the back of our necks, jumping over the couch. And all of a sudden, mom came and approached us and said, hey, I actually need to tell y'all something. So we're like, okay. So we go and sit down about that time. The phone rings, and my mom goes away, and she's like, no, I haven't, I haven't told him yet. I'm about to sit him down and tell him. So me and my brother are over off to the side contemplating on what mom is about to tell us. Um, life was too good to be true. There was nothing that could go wrong in our lives, in our little minds. So she comes back, and she starts to tell us, um, I just wanted to make you aware that Oh, my goodness, your father and I love you so much. We adore you. There's nothing that you guys have done wrong. However, I just want to make you aware that your um, father and I are getting a divorce. So I say that, and we dropped our little heads, and we began to cry. We knew divorce was a bad thing, but it, we didn't really know exactly what divorce really meant. Um, and in today's society, divorce is so common, so it's almost like nonchalant, oh, they got a divorce. But divorce is such a painful process, and it's not just a one-time decision where you sign a piece of paper. Um, it's been almost 20 years, and still to this day, I have to deal with divorce, um, split, split holidays, um, worried about hurting mom or dad's feelings. I mean, it's just, it's like, it's a constant battle. Um, However, in that moment, that began a huge um, hit for my heart. Um, deep voids began to form. Dad, when he came from home from the road, he didn't come home to home. He actually went to a different house. So in order to see Dad, I had to leave Mom by herself to go see Dad. And then eventually uh, a step-parent came into the picture. And y'all all know how it is with a step-parent. <laughs> but it's okay, <laughs> you know. So she came into the picture innocent, you know, but I, I'm not going to lie. I was a bit of a handful. So I gave her a run for her money. Um, Jesus, forgive me, Lord. Okay, yes. Yeah, 
So uh, anyways, we, we began life, but life was it, was, it was pretty hard and it was pretty dysfunctional, honestly. So I'm a PK, okay? We love the Lord, my whole family. However, once again, just because you love the Lord with all your heart, it does not disqualify you to have to walk through hardships and just dysfunction. So we, I swear there was probably a police car at our house every week, once a week. I rode in police cars. So I would get picked up because mom was mad at dad, so she sent over a police car to get us. It was crazy, but it was my reality. So in all of that dysfunction, all the fights, all the drama, my little heart and my little mind was just so broken and so shattered, and I didn't know how to deal with it. Um, my dad continued to travel and was, um, it was, you know, continued to travel in the ministry, and my stepmom with, went with him and my little sister, my little stepsister. So then I really began to cling to my mom. My dad traveled. He was in my life. However, mom was there holding it down all the time, so I stayed with her. So I really began to cling to my mother. She was my rock. So um, eventually, a couple years went by, and uh, I had a, a, one of my siblings was, we found out was sexually abused by a close friend of the family. From there, that was another hit. Um, it didn't necessarily directly happen to me. However, watching my sibling walk through that trauma and that heartbreak, it was devastating. And then from there, my mother didn't really know how to handle it. It was too overwhelming for her to handle. And so she had an emotional breakdown. She went into a deep depression, as we've been talking about with V. And um, I, my mom was physically available. However, she wasn't there at all. And so in that moment, years prior, my family had split trauma, didn't know how to handle it, began to cling to my mother. Then a couple years later, my mother goes off the deep end, and I lose my mother. So once again, it was, it's almost like a snowball effect. These, these voids just began to continue to just take over my heart. And I loved God. I served the Lord, yet I was full of, of uh, just really just broken, just broken. Um, time goes on, and due to all of this, I just began to, to search, I guess, search for things. I didn't even realize I was searching or what I was even searching for. But I longed for something to fill the voids in my heart. Um, at age 14, along comes a guy, a boy. And um, he, he didn't serve the Lord. He claimed to serve the Lord, but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, whatever. So he was the star of the he was the star of the basketball team, and I was a cheerleader. So that just made sense, right, for us to be together. <laughs> I was like, yeah, this is like a movie. Yeah, let's let's look up. <laughs> so we start dating. My first boyfriend ever. I mean, age fourteen, it should be my first boyfriend, but whatever. So we start boyfriend and girlfriend. We actually date for three years. Um, in that time, um, because I was so broken, I just my identity was completely lost. Therefore, I allowed him to treat me any type of way. Um, he slowly hooked me. <laughs> Eventually, after a year and a half of dating, I lost my virginity to him. And um, he truly just took over my life. I began to sneak out of the house. I began to lie, which was never my character. But I began to lie, and I became rebellious. And I just had to have this guy in my life because he was filling these voids that truly only God can fill, but later I learned that. Um, he cheated, and he was abusive emotionally. Um, there were a lot of different situations where I literally was beaten down. Um, and that, again, was just another hit to my heart. Um, once I lost my virginity, I, as a church girl, I felt like I had to be with this guy because, because I lost my virginity, he has to be my husband, which, side note, that's a lie of the enemy. Um, a lot of church, it's crazy how the enemy will use the word of God um, and twist it, right? And I remember being like, no, love is patient. Love is kind. Love doesn't keep a record of wrongdoings. And so the enemy took the word of God, and it actually kept me in the relationship. Um, so I knew I had to get away. I knew I had to break free from this. I knew I had a calling on my life. However, I didn't know how to break free. I was in church every Sunday. <laughs> I was in church every Wednesday. My daddy was a pastor. And yet I still didn't know how to fight anymore. 
I knew God was real. I knew that God was able, but once again, I didn't know how to break free. I knew that if I could get out of my small town, that that would probably, I could leave everything behind and move forward in my life. So finally, I'm like, I'm about to graduate. I'm a senior in high school. I'm about to graduate, get out of here, move to Dallas, and pursue God's will for my life. So 17, I pack up my bags. The week I'm supposed to leave, I actually have a car wreck. My car gets totaled, and therefore I can't move to Dallas without a car. So in that, in that period of time, my father approaches me and says, Taylor, I had a dream that you're pregnant. Do y'all have the parents that, like, the Lord speaks to them through dreams and, like, <laughs> right? I'm like, oh, Jesus, you ain't supposed to do that. Dang. <laughs> Seriously, though. So, so anyways, I'm like, oh, about that. Um, mm, well, <laughs> I'm like, no, you're crazy, Dad. Like, oh, you're just in my business. That's crazy. So then he goes out of town, and I'm, like, running to Walmart to get, like, five pregnancy tests. <laughs> so I'm literally at a friend's house, and it's midnight. We literally make a run to Walmart to get a pregnancy test. And I go into the bathroom, and I just knew, like, this is, this is retarded. Like, this, there's no reason for me to do this. I'm not pregnant. I take the pregnancy test, and bam, it's positive. Oh, my goodness. The fear the the shame, the guilt, the things that I had dealt with in my past growing up, all the broken, it just was this wave of, oh my God, how did I get here? Here's a girl that grew up loving the Lord with all of her heart, and yet due to setups of the enemy, these little pivotal moments, these targets that he sent my way, it overtook me, and now here I am, pregnant, 17, out of wedlock, and I'm a pastor's daughter, and it's in a small town, so you know the town's about to talk. So I just, I was overwhelmed. However, for me personally, abortion was not an option, and adoption wasn't an option, even though adoption is incredible. I just knew, you know what, this is my responsibility. I got myself in this situation, so I'm about to own up to it. So I go to my dad, I go to my family, I sit them down. It was one of the hardest talks I ever made, and I told them I'm pregnant. And the beautiful, they showed me grace in such a beautiful way. Um, we had our issues as a family, but one thing is they understood grace. And they said, you know what, we love you. You've made mistakes, but we love you, and we're going to get through this. The baby is not the, the sin. The baby is not the, the negative. The baby has is, has a calling, has a purpose. So we're going to raise this baby in the house of God, and everything's going to be okay. So time goes on. I'm waiting tables. I go to hair school. I'm doing my thing, prepping for, for my baby. Um, eight months goes by. It's Christmas Eve of 2005. I go into labor. I get to the hospital. I'm like, oh my God, I'm about to have my baby. And so um, I'm about to land. I, I go to the hospital and I'm literally anticipating this moment. This has been, it started out negative. However, you can't help but to get excited. There's a new life coming. And I know that God is a God that can restore and make things new. And so, here we go. I'm about to have him. So I go into emergency surgery. It's emergency C-section. And I just remember being wheeled down thinking, oh, my God, I'm about to meet my little Micah boy. And I go down. My mother um, and my father wheel me down with the, the doctors. And then next thing you know, I'm waking up. And it's this white room. It's like almost, I don't even know how to explain it. It was literally just all white and bright. And I woke up and uh, my father's on my left and my mother's on my right. And they're both just stroking my arm. And I open up my eyes and I see tears in my dad's eyes. And I see tears streaming down my mother's face. And first thing, as a mother, where's Micah? Where's my baby? I'm so ready to hold him. And they're there to tell me that he did not survive the birth, that he had lost oxygen and he wasn't, he didn't get out in time. So therefore he didn't survive. 
in that moment, another hit. (laughs) The pain, the heartache, the sorrow, the shame, the emptiness, the voids, the valley of the shadow of death. I found myself in crawling, barely couldn't even walk trying to make it and I had no idea I even got to that point my little boy Micah I chose to name him Micah because Micah means God's mouthpiece I said you know what God I don't know how I got here but you are a God that can restore and you are a God that makes all things new in spite of our failures And so I choose to love you. I choose to live for you. I choose to submit this moment. I held Micah for 18 hours, and in that 18 hours, all the thoughts that went through my head, but the one that kept (laughs) and that just stands out above all is that one day I will declare your goodness to the world, and you will win. You have won. I will win. Micah is in a better place in the arms of Jesus, given a life that I could never give him. And God, I don't know what my future looks like, but I stand and I walk by faith and I stand on your promises. So that was my beginning of my journey of, of healing. I didn't know what tomorrow looked like, but I knew that if I would surrender, 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 surrender. Surrender, right now, surrender every detail. Your heartache, your heartbreak, your selfishness, anything that is exalting itself above Jesus, surrender it and watch what He can do, what only He can do. So I chose to get up and pursue the life that I wanted to pursue before any of this ever happened. And that was get up, move to Dallas, Texas, go to Christ for the Nations, pursue worship, And that's literally what I did. And slowly, it's been a journey. It's been a process. I believe that God is a God that can instantaneously change it overnight. But then I also believe it's a journey. And mine, I'm coming on almost 10 years of this whole process. And I can truly say about five years, I still found myself fighting against depression, fighting against grief and sorrow. Every year, uh, December 24th would come around, the things that I would wanna go back to. It's been a process, but it's so beautiful because when I surrendered every detail, I've literally sat back and watched God bring restoration to every single thing hit that the enemy did to my heart. Every hole in my heart, it's been filled. It all started with the divorce, and now our family is one big happy family. I'm talking about we're having, we're having barbecues, and the step parents are coming over, the step the in laws, this and that. We're all the the happy. The more the merrier. We're all getting along. It's the the greatest joy. The second hit my mother. Emotional breakdown, lost, filed bankruptcy, lost everything she had, couldn't work, this, this, and that, blah, 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 blah. Now, she she got to the point where she couldn't even, she couldn't read. Her anxiety was too high. Now, she's a straight-A student in college (laughs) with a 4.0, right. And it's amazing and the most beautiful process to see God's restoration in her personal journey. Then, the relationship. I didn't even think, after losing my virginity, that I ever deserved a man like Robert Madu. (laughs) And then he came and literally swept me off my feet. And I see grace through my husband. I had disqualified myself, not God. God said, there's nothing that you can do that can ever disqualify you to receive my grace and my perfect will for your life. And then my baby girl, Everly Adair, who I love with all my heart, it's overwhelming. 
because it's been a long process and I've longed for her. I've longed for that. And she's five months old and literally, I can't even explain the healing. And God, once again, he said, when you surrender, Taylor, look at the life I can give you. And so today, I'm here not to just whatever, just talk to you. I know I talk in mazes and I'm country and whatever. But you know what? I am an example of the goodness and the grace of Jesus and the restoration and the hope. And I believe that God is able when you surrender. And I encourage every one of you to run after Him. He's not finished yet. Real Talk Kim's gonna go in a bit. And I just see like through all of these, all of these speakers that God, He's here to restore today, to bring freedom and healing. And I just, I love every one of you. I wanna pray with you if I can eventually. Um, once again, it's such an honor to be here. And thank you so much for allowing me just to share with you my story of, of God's grace on my life. Thank you. You can watch this video now. I was born and raised in a small southern town, Arkansas, with a picture-perfect all-American family. Life was perfect in my eyes. One day at seven years old, my mom came to me and my brother, and she began to tell us something that would change our lives forever. It it began um, a painful process. There was this brokenness that had formed. With a broken heart and with voids in my heart, I began to search. I didn't realize I was searching or what I was even searching for, but I guess something that couldn't be taken away from me, and so that set me up for the perfect scenario of at age 14, I got into a relationship. It was a pretty unhealthy relationship in a lot of different ways. I continued to be beaten down and I just found myself in a hole. Um, it was, I, I couldn't seem to get out of it. So at age 17, I'm a pastor's daughter and I'm pregnant out of wedlock in the hospital for three days and I would wake up just to cry myself back to sleep. Every time I would awake, it felt like a dream. It felt like it wasn't real and yet I would wake up to reality. This is what happened. This is where you're at, Taylor. But in that three day period, God invaded that hospital room. I'd heard about this God my whole life but yet the God that met me in the hospital room was so tangible and so real um, that He truly became uh, my Savior that day. And so I get up and I know that there's more. I know that He's a God that can make everything new, which leads me now to Hope Mansion. So my pastor's wife, Becky Hennessy, um, began to cast the vision to me about Hope Mansion. Hope Mansion is a home that houses girls that have gotten pregnant out of wedlock that have nowhere to go. You can come here and we'll provide a place for you and your baby to live. We'll provide food, schooling, counseling. As she was telling me about this, immediately my heart leaped because I was once in their shoes. I was once pregnant out of wedlock, um, broken, and just needed help, needed that support. And so I knew that I wanted to help with Hope Mansion. I just didn't know exactly what that was going to look like. So I find myself sitting at a piano and I begin to write. Um, I'm reflecting on the goodness of God and the grace of Jesus and what He had done for me. And that's where your life was formed. And then in the midst of this whole planning process, God said, every time the song is sold, I want you to give 100% of the proceeds to Hope Mansion. It's as simple as going and buying a song for 99 cents on iTunes or buying a download card for $2 and that will be your seed to sow. And then when it's all said and done, I'll add it all up and that'll be my seed to sow on ground where I once stood. I'm just simply asking you to join with me today, to simply go and purchase a song, tell your friends about it, let's start a movement, let's raise awareness. Every time it's purchased, the enemy is defeated, God is glorified, and it is a baby that is saved. It is a woman who has lost hope encountering the grace and the love of Jesus again. I'm just reminded that the enemy did not win, that I took it back and God is being glorified through this. Thank you so much.
You are 